Hello world, I'm Glocarp. Welcome to Sid Meier's Colonization, a game that is almost 30 years old and still nothing that's quite like it on the world. So it's a turn-based, turn-based, of course it's a turn-based, well okay, I, there might be non-turn-based strategy games. Anyways, it is a 4x game about the colonization of the new world, and as usual it's better to just start going in the game before I explain anything more about it. Uh, normally I, or, well not normally, most of the time I play in America, that will give you like the actual map of the Americas, but this time we're gonna play on a new world, we're gonna customize it or we're gonna put large landmass and continents because otherwise it's gonna be quite uh, annoying. Uh, we're gonna be temperature, we're gonna be normal, yeah our temperature is gonna be temperate and we're, our climb is gonna be normal. And then we are gonna pick our difficulty level, we're gonna pick Conquistador, because that's the middle difficulty level, and since this is a Sid Meier's game, I'm going to assume that the difficulty works quite like it does on all Civilization games, which is that if you go higher than the midpoint, uh, the computer starts cheating, and if you go lower than the midpoint, the computer gets punished. So we're gonna play on the midpoint here, and then we can pick our European power, we could be English, English get better immigration, we could be French, French get better cooperation with the natives, we could be Spanish, Spanish can conquer natives more easily, or we could be the Netherlands, the Dutch, who get better trade, and we are going to be the Netherlands, because I like them the most in this game. We are, of course, well, I am, it's asked me to enter my name, I am Uncle Carp. So, Netherlands, the Protestant Dutch provinces gained their independence from Catholic Spain during the Age of Expansion. A maritime country of fishermen and merchants, the Dutch Netherlands operated large merchant and fishing fleets in the North Sea and the Baltic. Upon achieving political independence in the early 17th century, this tiny nation found itself ideally poised to expand its overseas trade into lucrative new markets in the Far East and New World. Unlike their rivals and sometime enemies, the Spanish, French and English, the Dutch were ruled by their merchant class. This unique arrangement led them to focus all aspects of state diplomatic, military and economic policy around the interests of trade. Their strategy proved quite successful and the Dutch economy and merchant fleet expanded so rapidly that the other European powers felt compelled to take drastic measures against the Dutch in order to pop up their own less successful enterprises. To represent the strength of the Dutch economy as well as Dutch achievements in shipping, commerce and banking, the Dutch player receives a bonus when trading with Amsterdam. Commodity prices in Amsterdam do not collapse as quickly as in other European ports and they recover more quickly. Well, that was already a bit of uh, basically information about the game that you might have absolutely no idea about, but we'll, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. So, Year of Our Lord 1492, an audience with the stud holder. For the greater glory of the Netherlands, we dub the Viceroy of the New World. Go and explore this new land. Settle it and bring wealth and glory to yourself and our nation. In the year of our Lord, 1492, and now we're in the most annoying part of this game, because this is kind of intro, and I think the game is loading in the background, so this intro takes forever. An expedition led by the great conquistador, Uncle Carp. One thing I do really like about this game, though, is the music. Left Amsterdam on a voyage of discovery. <laughs> Commissioned and blessed by the stadtholder of the Netherlands. <laughs> to explore the ocean sea. <laughs> to find uncharted lands. Oh, now it actually loaded, so we didn't have to. Okay, so basic 4x things. We got a unit here. This is a boat. The boat has uh, another, uh, two other units in here. We can see that this unit is a warrior unit or a soldier unit because he's got a weapon here, and we can see that this guy is a pioneer unit because he's got this pickaxe here. I mean. I, Cause I just know what the, their sprites looks like, so that's why I know that that's what they are. But also, one thing we can notice here is that they are both kind of grayish. So as soon as we make landfall, we'll talk about that a bit more. Okay, okay, there's some land. So let's just... Ooh, discovery of the new world. So we are gonna call this... Pla uh, call this new land, we're gonna call it Carponia. Okay, so what we got here is... Uh, ancient ruins, so basically that is what in other call games we would call a goody hut. So let's just uh, make land for here on the goody hut. Oh, we find nothing but rumors. Well, that's fine. Okay, so we're just gonna put our guys down 
And unlike other games, this game does not have like a settler unit or anything. Every single unit in this game can build a town. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're just gonna pick a good spot. I'm gonna look around a little bit with our boat here. Okay, there's some Indians there. Uh, natives, natives. I'm probably gonna be calling them Indians a lot of the time. But that that is meant as in no way as uh, disrespectful. It's just uh, I think this game occasionally called no. I think this game actually might call them natives. Actually, let's look at because we have a lot of reports here. No, it's an Indian advisor. Okay, so this game calls them Indians, so I'm probably gonna be calling them Indians. If this offends anyone, I am sorry. I do not mean absolutely no offense with that. Okay, so we got a colonist here with a hundred tools, but let's what we're gonna do here. Okay, let's have this guy here. This is our colonist. Uh, we can have him if we just go to orders here. Build a colony with B. So we build a colony. We're gonna call this uh, Carp City. And uh, that's our first colony. So let's have a look at the colony screen here. So on the colony screen, we got this here, which is uh, how many squares? Oh, well, this is eight squares we can work on and the square in which we personally are. Now, if we look at our guy here, click on him, we can see that this is all the things you can do. Well, they, they are all here at the bottom. These are all the resources in this game. So we can have him collect any of these resources. And I can see that some here have, they have like a number slash a number. So for instance, uh, well, tobacco here is one out of, oh, zero out of one. That means that on this particular square, we can grow zero tobacco, but there is a square here where we can grow one tobacco. Okay, so uh, that's what these numbers mean. And these uh, other ones here, like behind, like that are below here, like three rum. Well, that makes us, we got buildings here, so it will work us on a building. We will work here on a building. Now things to notice here from a new city immediately are the town hall and the fact that we're making one cross here even without a church because the town hall makes a liberate bells and we get a cross here just for being here okay first of all let's put this guy uh, who had 50 muskets on him you can see we have 50 muskets because he was the soldier guy so he had 50 muskets on him that's how you make soldiers we could make him like if you go here uh, we could turn him into a soldier with 50 muskets or we could just turn him into a colonist uh, where then he would just leave the colony and since there would be zero colonies here, the colony would be destroyed. The first thing we want to do usually is collect some lumber. We'll just collect lumber because with lumber we can then build buildings here. We can build armory, docks, warehouse, stable. These are all good things. Uh, these other things are things that require, well, they require tools and they're a bit more, uh, well, a bit more advanced things. You can see, like printing press, that gives us more, uh, these bells, uh, weaver shop, typecasting shop, rum distillery, fur trading post, blacksmith shop. They're just upgrading the buildings here into better versions because... Uh, oh, and one thing about this, like if we weren't here to do rum or make rum, we couldn't actually make any rum because to make rum we would require sugar and there is no sugar here so we can't make rum. Okay, and I wanted to talk about the bells and uh, the uh, crosses. So if we go to our report, we have here a religious advisor. So the religious advisor reports this as, hey, we got four crosses here. And when we have enough crosses here, which I'm not, I'm never really sure how many crosses we need, uh, we're gonna get uh, a free person from, if we go to Europe, I'm gonna press E to go to Europe. Uh, we get a free person from one of these here. We normally would have to pay money here. You can see recruit 159 gold to get any of these. Well, one of these guys uh, would as soon as we get that money, we're gonna go and pick the season scouts. That's for sure. Okay, so that's what we do cr with crosses. And if we look at our, I wonder which. I think it's is it continental. Yeah, the continental congress. Right. So the continental congress. This would show us the the bells. And once we get more bells, we can get a new. What are they called? Founding Fathers. And founding Fathers are kind of like technology in this game. So, and now we have another colonist here with a hundred tools. So he can work the surrounding squares. So if we, uh, I'm going to right click here so that we can go to this kind of mode where we can just look at the scenery. And I'm going to press F1 to get more information about this particular force. Because this is where we put our one guy to get more food. 
and we can see, hey, if we were to build a road here, we would get plus two uh, wood. And this is like, we can find the information about what any of these things do, or what kind of people can work on here. But what we'd really want to do is immediately build another town, because of the fact that it does give us that extra bell, and it does give us that extra cross. And it's not gonna take that long for us to get new people in. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have this guy move down here until we're like, uh, like here or here. Or one of these like three squares is probably where we're gonna go. Because we wanna be coastal so that we can put our uh, boats in here. Okay, so the uh, Continental Congress will expand during its next session, Your Excellency. Which founding father shall we appoint as its next member? So this is tech. And we can figure out, well, there we got these options here. We got trade advisor, exploration advisor, military advisor, political advisor, religion advisor. Peter Minuit, if we're gonna push F1 for help. We can see that uh, once Peter Minuit joins the Continental Congress, the Indians no longer demand payment for their land. Because, uh, yeah, he, he bought Manhattan. I think it's Manhattan. Yeah, Manhattan from the Indians for 24 bucks. Which, he, like, the idea is that he somehow cheated the Indians, but the Indian, I think the Indians, the natives, actually thought that they were cheating him because you can't own land. Anyway, then we got Ciudad de la Salle here. Uh, all existing and future colonies a stockade when the population of the colony reaches three. That's pretty good. A stockade is just walls, or the most basic form of walls. Uh, Paul Revere, when a colony with no standing soldiers attacked, a colonist automatically takes up any stockpiled muskets in defense of the colony. That's not very good. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, I remember Benjamin Franklin being pretty good. The King's European Wars have no further effect on the relation between the powers in the New World, and Europeans in the New World always offer peace in negotiations. Okay, so this is super good. This is like a, the, the best thing to have if you're playing a non-war-like game. And I usually like to play this non-war-like. We'll check, check out what Brewster would give us still. The Brewster in the Congress, no more criminals or servants appear on the docks. Ooh, and you select which immigrant in the recruitment pool will move the docks. Okay, Bill and Brewster is pretty damn good as well. Uh, I think we're gonna take Brewster first. Because, uh, like, I was already uh, here looking at the recruits. We got here one indentured servant. Uh, indentured servants are just, uh, like, the basic unit we have is a free colonist. A free colonist doesn't have an occupation of any kind. An indentured servant is worse than a free colonist, so we don't really want them at all. Okay, do, are we making anything here? Uh, we're really not making anything here. Uh, probably should have used the pioneer to clean out the forest from the square, because I think that would give us uh, more, like, if we look at the terrain here, uh, this becomes prairie, if cleared, so I seem to remember there being a way to get to maybe the prairie from this screen, but apparently not. Okay, well, if we press H, it will give show us all the uh, terrain that's... Okay, I can't just get to it. Okay, well, the, luckily we got the colonize, colonizopedia. We're gonna just get to terrain types and look at prairie. Uh, yeah, that's gonna give three food from a farmer, which uh, is more than the two we're making now, and that would be good. So, yeah, uh, as soon as we get another unit we're going to make that into a pioneer and fix our cities a bit but yeah this guy we want him to go maybe one more down it's having a having a bit of a like having some forest Ooh, this is not a very good spot really because there's gonna be so much water here if I go here uh, and I don't want to be inland because I want to be able to get to our cities with boats at this point in time, still. So maybe I'll go on the... F no, building on the... Ooh, meeting the natives for the first time. The Iroquois tribe welcomes you. We are a glorious nation of 19 villages. 19 villages is a lot. Oh, that's a super lot for, uh, for the natives. To celebrate our friendship, we generously offer you the land you now occupy as a gift. Will you accept our treaty and live with us in peace as brothers? Yes! The Iroquois welcome peace with our brothers, the Dutch. Let us smoke a peace pipe to celebrate our perpetual friendship. We hope you will soon visit Iroquois villages to share knowledge with us, and that you will send your wagon trains to trade with us. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do that pretty soon. I Oh! That's some Spanish people. That's it's never really good when you see Spanish people around. Oh, oh, we got a ruin there. Okay, now, what am I gonna get if 
I build on this particular score. I think we're gonna get some ore from that. <sighs> That's planes. Planes is super good for food. Okay, I just said that I want our cities to be inland, or not to be inland, but I think I'm gonna make an inland city right here. Oh, that feels like such a stupid idea in the beginning, but... Hey, expert silver miner not available in Amsterdam. Okay, that's actually good. Okay, let's send this... Uh, I press G for go to, and we'll go to Amsterdam here. So we're gonna build here. I'm gonna press B and build. Uh, doesn't have access to the ocean. Yes, I know that this doesn't have access to the ocean. I know exactly what I'm doing. This one we're gonna call... Hmm... You know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let them be named what they are. Our first city is gonna be Carp City, and everything else is just gonna be what the game wants me to call it. Okay. Now, how much? Okay, you can find six lumber from here. That's good. Oh, zero silver. Oh, but I think that the expert silver miner can still just find silver. Okay, we put you here, and then we put here for six lumber. It'll go where the six lumber is without me having to try to figure it out. Okay. Okay, 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 so next turn, and our ship is gonna head to Europe, and we're just gonna go for next turn by pressing enter. Oh man, I really maybe should have taken something to sell, but like, we got 12 furs here, that's not gonna make any money. But yeah, the, oh, didn't really mean to go here, but uh, we were, like, this thing was on top of that, so that's why it went there. And I think we're gonna be, yeah, we're in Europe now. But yeah, we don't have any money. I'd really, really like to recruit that scout. Oh, an expert lumberjack as well. Oh, and what, so what we can do here, we can recruit one of ra this random pile with a very small amount of money. We can purchase uh, artillery or new boats. They're just gonna cost money. Or we can actually train people. And you can see training people is rather more expensive than just getting... We're gonna be starting to train them at some point. But yeah, we're gonna need a bit of money for that. Okay, let's take this silver miner and get them to Europe and okay one thing I'm really starting to think or well, I'm starting to rethink here is this guy's taking lumber I don't really think we need lumber I'm just gonna make him into a farmer so he can make food because once the food reaches what's the limit oh, I don't remember the limit but there's like a limit that once the food reaches that uh, we are going to get a new person in there Hey, the Iraqi tribes is pleased to see the progress of our neighbors at Fort Orange. We have come to offer you six cotton. Woohoo! Six cotton. Nice. Oh, more six cotton. Nice. So now we got 12 cotton there at least. Which means... Okay, I'm going to uh, take the silver miner towards Fort Orange here. Yeah? I'm just going to make landfall here. And then uh, I'm going to... Yeah, I, we're going to have to make a little bit of money. So I'm just going to sell everything that's... Like, looks even... Oh, damn it. Didn't really want the turn to end right there, but it automatically ended. Because what I want to do is I want to put this guy... Can you find silver? You can find silver. Okay, if I have you find silver, and then I'm going to make you into a pioneer. You're going to want one silver per turn, which is not very useful. So yeah, let's just uh, try to increase our amount of people here. Right, and yeah, we're just going to go sell this fur. It's not going to be worth much, but it's going to be worth something. And just uh, head to Amsterdam. Okay. Price of furs has risen. Well, that's nice. Oh, and we get... Oh, just the indentured servant. Well, at least we get a reason to go to where we were going there. Okay, let's check out this sp spot. So, Farmer Plow River gives more food. So, we're going to have uh, this guy... Oh, where are you? Here you are. Activate! No, no changes, okay. Right, how do I activate you? Right, I gotta click on there. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna plow this location. Cargo from the new world! Oh yeah, we brought some furs. Woohoo! Got a hundred bucks for the furs. Ah, <sighs> I really don't like indentured servants. Uh, can I actually... Like, if I go to Colonizopedia, will it tell me the problems with... And the colonist skills, yeah, indentured servants. Indentured servants are people who decide to come to the new world but who cannot afford to pay their own way. They accordingly put themselves into bondage and agree to work of their passage in the new world. 
They, like petty criminals, are useful workers in the field and mines, but are less productive than the free colonists in manufacturing and processing jobs. But through education or military experience, they can become free colonists. Yes. Now, this is one of the things that some people find problematic in this game, is that that is pretty much the only way that slavery is in any way acknowledged in this game. And that's even not really slavery, so they just... The makers of the game just didn't want to put slavery in the game, so they just didn't. Which some people find problematic and kind of like whitewashing of history, but... I personally don't really care that much. Because this game is just so good, so... Okay, I think we're gonna go and maybe lumberjack some more. No, we're gonna need food here, okay. You can... Oh, only two out of two food. Yeah, so just having this guy here for two food is completely worthless, because he's just making enough food to survive, because every colonist needs two food. Oh, this was not a good spot to put our starting colony in. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this... Uh, yeah, this indentured servant into a soldier. And I'm gonna go scout with him a bit. Hey, 14 first, nice. Now, one of the problems we're gonna have at Fort Orange pretty quickly, because it does not have a port, is that it's gonna be full... Well, it's gonna be full of cotton, first of all, because 100 is the limit without a warehouse. So, we really would want to find some more people, but... Oh, entering Indian village. Oh, I didn't really mean to do that. I accidentally did that. But yeah, we could trade... Ooh, tools and rum. Even tobacco would be of some value. But we don't make any of that stuff yet. So we can trade with the natives as well. And if we have a scout, we can go and talk to the natives in their village and uh, get some good stuff. They're like uh, secondary goody huts, <laughs> let's call them. And also, then we can send our free colonists to talk to them and give them a profession. Like every... Every native village has... Oh, Season Scouts! Oh, Season Scouts! Yep, go to Amsterdam quickly, quickly, quickly. Okay, we added... Oh, there was a forest! No, 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 this is... I wasn't paying any attention! Like, there was some kind of, like, scrub shrubbery here, and the oasis was part of the shrubbery! Oh, I was just... I was explaining too much and not paying enough attention. Well, that's bad! Okay, can we make the desert better for... food? Okay, but we did just get a scout from uh, Europe. Okay, let's check out this square. Yeah, Plow will still give us more food here. That's just... Okay, we get another place where we can get... Okay, we can get three food from this forest. So let's just get three f food from this forest and be completely annoyed by the fact that, uh... Yeah, just ruined that good food square from there. Oh, that was just... Ah! Right. But yeah, we're gonna get a scout, so I don't want to send this guy out scouting anymore. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna put this silver miner to mine some silver. Because silver is gonna be expensive, we're gonna put this guy working on some food here. So this place should get enough food that at some point it's gonna grow. But man, man, oh man, oh man. I do not feel that this beginning has gone very well. Okay, do we? No, we do not have enough money. Okay, at least we get ourselves a scout. Uh, Son of Liberty membership in uh, Carp City is up to 10%. You're excellent. The more Liberty Pills our statement generate, the faster membership will rise. Continue. So, okay, at this point I think it might be a good point to talk about how to win this game, actually. So. The, the the more we have these Liberty Bells, the more we want to be independent. And the way we win this game is by declaring our independence. There is a button here to declare independence. We're not gonna press that. Uh, and if we look at the, the Continental Congress... Now, at the point when we declare independence, this amount of Dutch soldiers will be sent out. Right? They will be sent out Oh, snuff the uh, independence movement, the rebellion, and we're gonna have to kill them all. So basically, before we think that we can deal with this amount of soldiers attacking us, there's no point in declaring independence. It's gonna be at some point, though. It's gonna be possible at some point. Uh, I really should have been building roads here, I forgot. Well, let's build a road here, because I want there to be a road between our cities. 
so where's... Oh, rum has risen, cloth has fallen. Okay, people are selling stuff in Europe. Where is our boat? Come on, boat, come back to us. Okay, there's our boat. Oh, and we got William Brewster. Okay, so from now on, we're not ever gonna get any more indentured servants, and we're not gonna get any petty criminals either anymore, uh, which we didn't even see one, even one, but that's good. So, one of the Pilgrim Fathers and four framers of the Mayflower Compact, William Brewster, served as the first Pilgrim Minister and was instrumental in organizing the party that sailed on the Mayflower. Okay. Right, let's go and dump this guy over here, make landfall, nothing but rumors. Oh, Isabella's right there. Okay, and now that we have the scout here, ooh, more cotton, thank you. Come on, come on Spanish, don't kill them. Well, they got 19 cities, but still, even every city that's been destroyed is very bad. Okay, and uh, these are, I think, always randomized, so we don't have the same people we had here last time. So Peter Stuyvesant, now, allows construction of the custom house in your colonies, which can streamline trade with Europe and allow... Okay, custom house is one of the best buildings in the game, so I think we're gonna take Peter Stuyvesant immediately. Henry Hudson increased the out of all fur trappers by 100%, Hernan Cortez. Uh, conquered native settlements always yield treasure in greater abundance, and the king's gallant stands for treasure free of port charge. Now, I don't really care about that. Thomas Paine. When Paine enters the Continental Congress, liberal development production in all colonies is increased by value of the current tax rate. Yeah, we really don't want to take him very early. And William Penn. Cross production in all colonies increased by 50%. Okay, we're gonna take Peter Stuyvesant. And uh, I want to check out what's our cross production here. Okay. One. Hey, we got four silver. Oh man, I just this feels like this is not going well. But hey, at least now that we got that, uh, yeah, just, let's just go to Europe. Now that we got this guy, uh, we're gonna be getting some easy money. Okay, let's speak with the chief. Okay, they are master cotton planters over here, and they're gonna tell us tales of nearby lands. That is fine. Actually, it's always pretty good. Let's get some more. Oh, the Spanish are gonna be a problem. Okay, we're gonna go to Carp City here, and we're going to order this guy to clear the forest from Carp City. Okay, uh, let's head to the mountains here, and then over here. Nothing but rumors, unfortunate. Oh, come on! Come on, Spanish, stop killing them! Like the Spanish, like, they're just gonna kill. Oh! 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 We got enough money to get someone from here. Uh, I think we're gonna take the Master Carpenter. Yeah, Master Carpenter for sure. Master Carpenters help us build buildings faster. And that is super... Okay, we're... F get enough or too much lumber here already. Which is good, because now we're gonna be building the... Uh, we're gonna be building the dock so that we can get food from the ocean. Hopefully we can get more than two food from here. And, uh, yeah, we got the Carpenter coming, so having the... Having more than enough lumber at this point is super good. Okay, let's go talk to the people in this village. Ask to speak with the chief. Oh, it's scouts! Scouts, nice. Actually, I'm going to, I'm gonna write that down. Because if we can just turn our uh, free people, in free colonists into scouts, that's good. Because I, I would say we're gonna need like maybe four scouts to actually be uh, very, well, to be effective at the exploration. But... Yeah, just having that available here is pretty good. Okay, I'm guessing these guys are cotton planters as well. Let's speak with the chief. No, scouts! Wow, okay. We get d double scout natives here. That's very good. Oh man, they, they just, just stop, stop trying to kill them. I don't want them to die. <laughs> okay, so in Carp City. We're going to put this guy working over here, and we're gonna send this other guy as a colonist so they don't die. Which is kind of interesting in that uh, they don't need food when they're just being colonists out there in the world, but they do when they're in cities, okay? But it's okay. Okay, fur trappers. Yeah, we might want those. Oh, nearby lands. Come on, give me some money! Because they can give us a little bit of money, and that would be so much. Uh, Oh, nine sugar. Thank you. 
Uh, rebel sentiments is rising, Your Excellency. 10% of the population supports the idea of independence from the Netherlands. As our colonies begin to feel more self sufficient they also become more productive. Any colony with at least 50% Sons of Liberty members it receives a plus one production bonus. Yep, that is super good. Okay, we get, like, these first are the only thing we can really sell. So let's just uh, go and sell them in Amsterdam. And, yeah, we already talked here. Let's see if we can go and get some stuff from here. Now, these can be negative as well. They're not negative quite often, but sometimes they are, and that's annoying. Okay, let's just go down here, because I think... Actually, we could use this guy to set up a new city. Yeah, let's send this guy down here. Uh, you were expert fur trappers, weren't you, there? Yeah, let's go have this... Okay, we're gonna have this guy go and talk to these natives here, become an expert fur trapper, and then go down here and start a city. Okay, we'll sell that, 170. Uh, expert lumberjacks, yes, please, we will take an expert lumberjack and go back to the new world. Okay, so you finished that, okay. So we're getting a little bit more food from here, and we're getting some cotton instead of the fur, but that is just fine. It's just fine. Uh, Fort Orange, I think, yeah, let's go build the road. Finish the road here. Uh, let's do it here. I think we can do it faster over here. Okay, ooh, there's some ruins as well. Oh, and there's this fun thing about this game, so when you are on a river, and move along the river, you're only moving at one quarter of, or using only one quarter of a move, and that's very nice. Nothing but rumors, damn it! I want something besides rumors. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, Spanish soldiers routed. Okay, and this is one of those things here. So, when you're fighting against uh, people, uh, you get weapons. If you just Lose the battle, you just lose your weapons, you still get to keep the dude, which is super nice. But hey, I'm looking at the, how long this recording has been going on, and I think we're gonna put our first cut in here. So, since this is a new series, I'm gonna ask uh, the regular thing that most YouTubers ask at the beginning of every, or like the, at every video, which is... If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, please press the like button and share it with your friends who might like, like games that are almost 30 years old. But yeah, that's it for now. I'm Uncle Carp. This has been Sid Mayor's Colonization. Goodbye, world. Thanks for watching. See you next time.